Good morning, beautiful women. Sisters, how are you? Really excited for our chat today. The yoni egg is something that I am really very passionate about and excited to continue sharing with you more and more each time. There is so much involved with the yoni egg technique and so many benefits and it is going to take more than one short video. So this will be the first of many. This is going to be your basic Yoni Egg 101 followed by some frequently asked questions. And so I put a little shout out on social media just uh, two days ago asking women what questions do they have around the Yoni Egg so I can start compiling the most frequently asked questions. And I got heaps and heaps and heaps. Today I'm just going to touch on a couple of them, a couple of the questions that I noticed were asked multiple times. And so if you if you think that your question hasn't been answered in here, know that I am going to be doing more and more FAQ sessions. So let's begin. So welcome to the Yoni Egg 101 and your first FAQ. So what is a yoni egg. A yoni egg is a crystal shaped egg that originated in China. See this beautiful little one? Where can I hold it? There. Over 5,000 years ago and is a technique from the Taoist tradition. It wasn't until recent years that we started calling it the yoni egg. Before that it was known as the jade egg because it was made purely of jade. At that point in time, that was the plentiful mineral in China and a product that meant wealth, longevity, vitality, power, and wisdom. So the yoni egg is inserted into the vagina for the purpose of strengthening the vaginal muscles, connecting with your sacred femininity, and toning the pelvic floor. These gemstones are also held internally during meditation for a more connected and divine feminine energy, during yoga practices for added sensation and strengthening, or even kept inside during sex or self-pleasure. But this is a practice like any other. You won't notice or see results and benefits unless you practice consistently. So let's now talk about size. So you have three sizes of eggs. Your large egg, your medium egg, and your small egg. So let me see if I can hold these all in a row so you really can get the gist of ooh, the sizes next to each other. Small, medium, large, medium in the middle, yeah, cool. Most women assume with the yoni eggs that you start with the smallest egg and you work your way up to the largest egg. It's actually the other way around. With the small egg being for more advanced practices, as your mu muscles do have to work harder to hold it in because it is a smaller item. So let's talk about the difference between each size and which might be the best for you to start with. So let's talk about the large egg. So the larger egg is easier to grip. Hold it against my hand. So if you have had two or three or more vaginal births, been through menopause, suffer from incontinence, or feel like you have a pretty weak pelvic floor, then starting with a large egg would be ideal for you. But you have to keep in mind that obviously the larger the egg, the heavier it's going to be. So it can be a little bit more difficult to keep it in for longer periods of time. And if you find that you start with a large egg and every time you stand up, your egg just keeps falling out, don't stress about that. That is completely normal, especially in the beginning. And if that's you, what you do is you do all your practices seated or lying down instead of standing and work your way up. Start to build and tone those internal muscles until you are okay to stand with it in. Your small egg. 
So small eggs are usually for women over 60 or who have been doing their practices for a while and consider themselves advanced. The smaller the egg, the more muscle dexterity is needed to feel and hold it inside of you. Small is also really good for younger women who still might be virgins, women who struggle with any form of vaginal penetration or women who suffer from excessive tightness in their pelvic floor. So that could also be vaginismus. If this is you, then I do suggest that you speak to a pelvic floor specialist first and don't do any of the practices with squeezing or pulling. Your focus will not be on toning and strengthening the muscles, but learning how to relax them, which is also what you can do with a yoni egg. It's not all about building strength. It's also about learning how to relax. And now your medium egg, this is a great place for most women to start. And it's what I usually recommend if you don't consider yourself to be part of the women I explained needing the large or small egg. So this size is gonna help you to be able to feel the egg and learn how to work within your different muscle groups. So I usually recommend women start with a large or medium egg, but if you are being called to use a small egg, go right ahead. I want you to learn to trust your intuition. And also know, a bit of a fact here, that you may feel absolutely nothing in the beginning, regardless of the size, regardless of what is going on internally for you, you may feel nothing and that is okay. A lot of women are so desensitized and numb inside the womb space and the pelvic area and in the vagina. And using the egg consistently is going to help resensitize those nerve endings. So if you feel nothing for a while, keep going, keep going. Let's talk about drilled eggs versus non-drilled eggs. So you only have the two options when it comes to your yoni eggs, drilled or non-drilled. And I always recommend women to start with drilled eggs. And this is so you can string your egg and have more control when it comes to removal. For some women, there's um, a fear, you know, in losing the yoni egg inside of you. So having that string there helps you to feel more relaxed and more in control. The string is also used for resistance exercises, so gently pulling on the string whilst engaging your muscles, and is also really helpful for beginners to be able to feel the egg moving up and down the vaginal canal. So non-drilled eggs are exactly that. There is no hole at the top of the egg. It's just a perfect egg-shaped crystal. Using a non-drilled egg means that you feel that you are ready to insert the egg and be able to remove it all by yourself without the string. So bearing down with the vagina muscles, the walls and the tissue within your vaginal canal. It's not like a pushing as if you're going to the toilet, but a bearing down feeling. And it takes time and it takes practice. Don't let this scare you though. If you can't get your egg out by bearing down or even pushing and squeezing, you can always scoop it out with your finger. It will never ever get lost. So let's talk about crystals now. Yoni eggs are made from a number of different crystals and each crystal has its own special healing properties, its own benefits and its own meanings, also its own connection energetically to different parts in your body. So the best crystal for beginners and the crystals that are usually recommended by Yoni Egg experts are your Nephrite Jade and your Rose Quartz. So these two. Nephrite Jade being the number one top pick. Obviously it's the traditional stone of choice and it has a really tough crystalline structure and is not likely to break when accidentally dropped. Nephrite Jade encourages you to acknowledge your untapped potential and fully step into the woman that you truly are. This stone also helps you move beyond any limitations internally and externally and manifest the dreams and visions that you have been carrying around and wanting to make your reality. Rose Quartz, it's soft, it's gentle, it's nurturing and it's supportive. It is perfect 
for beginners. It holds the vibrational energy of unconditional love and reconnection. It's going to inspire you to love yourself and practice self-forgiveness and self-acceptance. So it's going to help you also gently rebuild your relationship to yourself, your yoni, and your sensuality. So both of these stones, your jade and your rose quartz, are important for opening and reconnecting to your heart chakra. Let's go through some benefits. There are so many benefits, but firstly, I want to say, a disclaimer, like I do not claim that the yoni egg is going to fix or cure any of your ailments. I am not going to say that. I am not a doctor. I am not medically trained at all. Um, but I have been personally using my yoni egg on and off for years. And I have seen the shifts that have happened within my body. I have also spoken to countless women in the work that I do and in the places that I have studied online about the yoni egg who swear on the power of this technique. And I've even studied under qualified doctors who use and promote the yoni egg and the jade egg. So let's talk about benefits. Supporting orgasmic health. This is including vagina, cervical and uterine orgasms, right? Learning how to tone and relax your vaginal muscles. We are not tightening our yonis. We are toning them. A tight yoni means painful sex. A toned yoni means more pleasure. You can regain control of the pelvic floor muscles after childbirth, even years and years after childbirth. Reduce PMS, menstrual cramps, and breast discomfort because with regular practice, it is going to increase blood flow to your pelvic organs and help to move stagnant and repressed energy. Resensitive Resensitize your nerves throughout your entire pelvis. You can experience G-spot orgasms, cervical orgasms, ejaculative orgasms, multiple orgasms, and full body orgasms. Regular jade egg practice or yoni egg practice stimulates the Bartholin gland just inside the vaginal opening. And that is responsible for producing your lubrication, which can ease vaginal dryness if you suffer that during intercourse or self-pleasure and it's usually one of the first benefits that women experience with consistent practice is feeling juicier and I noticed that that was me that was my first benefit my first oh my god moment is when I I was suffering vaginal dryness during intercourse and even though I was feeling turned on and I was attracted to my partner, I was just not getting wet. And even after just a few days of five minutes a day, it all started to come gushing back. Such a beautiful, beautiful thing. It can improve bladder control and bladder health. So if you suffer from incontinence, severe or mild, it's not uncommon. It can help to release stored emotional and energetic imprints in the vaginal tissue holding on to these psychological blockages. It's, it's all of that repressed trauma, repressed shame around our sexuality and our body. You can overcome traumatic experiences and it can promote and encourage a sense of trust back in the body, releasing that shame from your womb space. Cultivate and enhance a deeper and more loving relationship with your body and your yoni and awaken your inner goddess your creative energy, your passion, your libido, and your sensuality. And this is just naming a few benefits. The potential healing that can occur from consistent practice with the yoni egg can help you physically, can help you emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. This tiny egg has changed lives. And I say this with conviction because I have lived this shift. My life in certain areas has been changed. Although, you know what? There is a lot more involved in that journey. You can't just pick up your egg and say, this is gonna heal me. This is gonna be the thing to change everything that's wrong with me, that needs to be fixed. No, it is there to help guide
guide you. You need to put in the work. There is so much that can come from consistent practice with this beautiful tool, this ancient and sacred tool, but you need to be the one to do all the other steps. There is never a one fix all solution, but it is an incredible tool and can help in so many ways. So that is your basic Yoni Egg 101. Let's get into our Q&A segment of this chat. And I wanna get around to asking a couple, I can't remember how many I've chosen, five or six of your questions. So let us begin. My hands get a little bit sweaty. So the first question that I want to answer is, are Yoni Eggs safe? And the reason I chose this answer is because I posted in a couple of women only Facebook groups a photo of me with my yoni eggs and I said I'm doing a live chat in my women's group on the yoni egg and I'd like to know what your questions are so I can put together you know a sheet of questions that women want to know about and in five or ten minutes I had hundred and twenty five comments just blasted on this photo from women and most of them I want to say 90% of them or even more were judgmental opinions that were not backed by much information so a lot of people are saying it's not safe it's you know it, it, it was it was a little bit nasty you know I was in a women's empowerment a women's supportive group and I just got bombarded with all of this these opinions that weren't backed by much knowledge and so I want to now clear some of that with are Yoni eggs safe so the answer is yes and no. And that doesn't mean it is bad for you. This all depends on where you purchase your egg from, how you choose to use it once it's in your care. So there are definitely companies out there making Yoni eggs with crystals that should probably not be inserted internally due to their weaker crystalline structure and porous makeup. Yoni eggs are becoming more modern and companies are really taking advantage of this and selling low quality stones for either super cheap or exorbitant amounts. So firstly, if you are yet to buy an egg, do your homework. If you already have an egg, maybe go back to the website you bought it from, read all the fine print, even email the suppliers and ask your questions. Know where it's coming from, know how they made it. The what is it for crystals? It's called the Mohs, M-O-H-S, Mohs structure, Mohs, I'm forgetting a word, but it tells you what the, the hardness of and the density of each crystal. So you want to be from five to seven and a half, I believe, is the perfect um, strength mineral to be inserted internally. So your health and your well-being is the most important thing here. I only buy my Yoni eggs from Yoni Pleasure Palace, who I am an affiliate with. I work closely with Rosie, Rosie Reese as an affiliate with the company, but also as a Naked Awakening facilitator. So I trust her company. I know that she is making, well, she's producing these products of the highest quality. And I'm going to link the website in the video description along with my discount code. So if you do want to get any new products, then you can have a little discount on me. So Yoni eggs are perfectly safe if you have purchased yourself a high quality egg made from the highest quality stone. They are also safe if you practice perfect hygiene. They are safe if you don't overuse them and you listen to your body, never forcing anything. This practice, like anything else, is going to have negative effects on your body if you overdo it, if you push yourself way past your boundaries, if you use the egg when you're not supposed to be using it, and so on. Which leads me to the second question. The don'ts of using a yoni egg. Don't ever put the egg up your bum. It will get lost. <laughs> Even if you string it, it is a risky, risky thing to do. Don't ever use a yoni egg if you have a UTI, thrush, or BV, bacterial vaginosis. During these moments, you need to give your vagina time to heal and to breathe. 
I usually say not to use your yoni egg during menstruation, but I know of some women out there who really like to do this. For me, I feel that this is a time of releasing, shedding your uterine lining. The flow of energy from my uterus is trickling down and inserting my egg feels like I'm kind of blocking this natural flow of downward energy. So I would never insert my egg on my heavy flow days. But there has been a moment once or twice that I felt called to use my egg on the last days of my bleed, maybe when there was just a little bit of spotting, but it's not a regular thing that I do. During pregnancy, again, this is going to be specific for each woman. So if you haven't been using your yoni egg regularly before falling pregnant, it's not a good idea to start this practice when you first fall pregnant. If you have been using your egg consistently for a long time before falling pregnant, you shouldn't have a problem continuing to use it. Just like yoga, right? If you never practiced yoga and then you found out you were pregnant and you're like, oh, I want to start preparing my body and you started doing heaps and heaps of yoga, it's not going to be good for you. There is so much happening in there already that you don't want to stress your body out. But if you've been practicing yoga five or six days a week for years and then you fall pregnant, your body knows that there's that muscle memory and you can continue practicing yoga. What you're going to do though, if you have been using your yoni egg and then you fall pregnant <clears throat> is you're just going to change up the way you practice instead of doing toning and strengthening or resistance exercises, you're going to start using your stone more sacredly for connection, for guidance, for rituals and in meditation. So I've heard from a few of my yoni egg teachers that during your first trimester, don't use your egg. This is a period of your pregnancy, your internals are going through a big energetic shift and you don't wanna interfere with any of those changes. In the second trimester, you can introduce your sacred practices, but always remember, never overdo it. Listen to your body, trust your intuition and ask your female doctors or people that you trust in this industry. Lastly, many women think that they can't use the yoni egg if they have an IUD, but it is safe to do so. There have been no stories of the string getting caught around the egg and affecting your practice. So you can put your finger up in your vagina, up your vaginal canal and feel the string coming out of your cervix. And even if you have a drilled egg they had, not that I know of or I believe that Rosie has heard of, there hasn't been any stories stated that the string has gotten stuck or caused the practice to be uncomfortable. But again, listen to your body. If you feel that there is something happening in there, then this is your choice, whether you remove your IUD or you choose not to use uh, a jade egg or maybe you buy one that has no hole. So then that fear around it getting caught in the hole is a bit more relaxed for you. Uh, no, there's more questions. Oh, yay. Is there a time limit of insertion when you first start using your Yoni egg? So this is a great question and one that almost everyone asks. A lot of you have had a Yoni egg for a while, but it's just sitting on your shelf collecting dust and you are, you know, you've got all these questions. You're ready to start using it. So. The answer is yes, there is definitely um, a time limit, but again, it's going to be different for each woman, depending if you have an overactive pelvic floor or you are really used to things being inserted regularly. You don't want to do more than 15 minutes in the beginning. One minute may be enough for you, but you know what? That's totally fine. There is no rules on how little you need to do. It's just consistency. Other times you may put it in and do a 15 minute practice and not want to take it out. That's okay too. Listen to your Yoni. She has a voice and one of the very special benefits of using the Yoni egg is to build a trusting and loving relationship with her. Start to listen, start to grow with her. And when you start using the Yoni egg, you want to be mindful that you don't overuse the egg and fatigue your vaginal muscles. You will notice if you've overdone your practice when you start to feel a dull 
ache or pain in your lower abdomen, kind of like menstrual cramps. And that, that's your muscles fatiguing. So that's your body saying too much, too long, give us a break. And if you feel this, take your egg out, give yourself a day or two or three, depending on if you still feel that fatigue before you start inserting it again and make your practice a little bit shorter. It's like going to the gym. When you start out, you can't just go in there and go hard for hours and hours and hours. You're gonna be exhausted. So take it slowly and take your time. Your practice will lengthen with consistency. Another question, can my Yoni egg get stuck or lost inside of me? The answer is no. You will never ever lose your egg because it will never make it up past your cervix and the top of your vaginal canal. So even if you've had a hysterectomy and you no longer have a cervix, that area is still closed. You won't lose your egg. Some women have longer vaginal canals than others, so it might be harder to get the egg out, but you will never completely lose it. And our last question for today, can I use the Yoni egg to help with prolapse? Yes, you can. Of course, depending on the severity of your organ prolapse, speak to your doctor first. Actually, the, the Yale University School of Medicine states that up to 60% of women have urinary incontinence issues and 50% of women after childbirth suffer from some kind of pelvic organ prolapse, also known as POP. And these stat statistics are absolutely crazy. They're, it should not be so high. In my opinion, we should all be able to experience total yoni and pussy well-being and optimal yoni and pussy health shooting ping pong balls out with you know dexterity and connection and understanding and toned and strength by using the yoni egg for prolapse you are resensitizing each each muscle group in your pelvis it's important to be able to differentiate these muscle groups for prolapse so that you're not just squeezing and releasing all of your internal organs and muscles but moving through your pelvis and squeezing and releasing certain places so learning and feeling the difference between your vaginal opening to your rectum to your perineum to your cervix the left side of your vaginal canal the right side of your vaginal canal this is going to help tone strengthen and lift all of your internal organs it is also very, very important after each exercise, and not just for women with prolapse, but anyone using the Yoni Egg to practice Yoni Shavasana. And it is one of the most beautiful parts of it. And this is that for the same amount of time that you have spent working your muscles, you must relax them too. Very, very important. So that was your questions and your Yoni Egg 101. I love talking about this stuff. I have more FAQ videos to come. I have written down all of your questions. So over the time, over multiple videos, we'll get all of this information out. And I do have a course that I am creating. It's taking me a little bit longer than I thought it would, but that is okay. I am enjoying and trusting the journey and the process. But this is going to be a five module course for beginner Yoni Egg users. And it is going to take you through the from the very beginning, setting healthy, safe foundations for you to build your sacred technique with the Yoni Egg. So I'm going to obviously I'll share that with you once it gets closer to the release date. But I really hope that you have enjoyed this time, this chat. Next week, I've got our first uh, guest appearance coming in to chat with me about female body hair and our journeys on that. So that's really exciting. And if you've got any other questions that you haven't yet sent to me, send them through. If they're not on my list, I'm going to add them on my list. Please hashtag replay if you are watching the replay and let me know where you are in your Yoni Egg journey. What are some things that you have noticed shifting in your body? What are some of the benefits that you notice? Because it is different for everyone and I would love to hear your story. Much love to you, my sisters. I will see you again very, very soon and we'll talk more about the beautiful Yoni Egg.